Hi guys, this is Miss Brown speaking. So this week we are going to begin with another application of our integer rules. When I say integer rules, I'm just talking about the positive, the rules for positive and negative numbers and how we know what our answer is going to be, whether positive or negative when, when we perform operations. So anyway, we are going to be applying our integer rules. So just like last week, you're going to have a chart if you want, and I need you to place a check beside the appropriate operation in all subsequent applicable rules. You're going to use those rules to solve the problem. After you have used the integer rules, then apply the fraction rules, okay? So the fraction rules come after the integer rules. And of course, show your work. So just to review, when we are adding fractions or mixed numbers, the first thing we need to do is to find a common denominator. Then we need to rewrite the fractions if necessary. Next, we're going to add the fractions. Remember, all we do is add the numerators, that's the top number, and the denominator stays the same. If there are whole numbers, we're going to add the whole numbers if necessary. And we should always simplify our answer and put it in best form. So if we are subtracting, we are going to find a common denominator, then rewrite the fractions if necessary. Next, subtract the fractions first. So you're going to subtract the numerators and the denominator will stay the same. However, if you go to subtract the numerators, and you figure out you can't and you must borrow one from the whole number. Please remember, to get your new numerator, you need to add the numerator and denominator together. This is not like traditional subtraction where you just stick a one in front of the number. For instance, if you had a three, you can't just stick a one in front of it and make it a 13. If you had a 5, you can't just stick a 1 in front of it and make a 15. You must add the numerator and the denominator. Next, subtract the whole numbers if necessary. And of course, you're going to simplify your answer. If we are multiplying fractions or mixed numbers, first we're going to convert any mixed or whole number to improper fractions if necessary. We're going to simplify before we multiply. That means we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. Next, we multiply the numerator straight across. Then we multiply the denominator straight across. And we simplify our answer if necessary. The last thing is division. When we divide, first we convert any mixed or whole number to improper fractions. Then we rewrite the problem to multiply by the reciprocal. That means keep, change, flip. Some of you understand keep, change, flip, but the correct mathematical way to say that is multiply by the reciprocal going to simplify before we multiply just like we did um, in multiplication then you're going to multiply the numerators across next multiply the denominators across and you're going to simplify your answer if necessary so let's see if we can accurately and correctly combine our integer rules with our rules for fractions Remember, first you use the integer rules, then you apply the fraction rules. So here's an example. Our example says negative five 
and 5 thirteenths minus 2 and 1 half. So I am subtracting, that's my operation. And this says to rewrite to add the opposite. So remember, when I'm adding the opposite, I'm keeping this first number just as it is. And then it says add the opposite. I'm changing this subtraction to addition. And I'm changing this number to its opposite. So when I rewrite that, it will look like this. It will be negative 5 and 5 thirteenths plus I'm adding and the opposite of a positive two and a half is a negative two and one half. So once I rewrite to add the opposite, then I have to follow my addition rules, which leads me right here. I am now adding, and if I look, I have a negative number added to another negative number. So these numbers have the same sign. So according to my rules, I just add those numbers, absolute values, and use the sign of both numbers. So please remember, if I'm using the sign of both numbers, that both of those numbers are negative, so my answer should be negative as well. I'm just putting an answer box with a negative in it to help me remember that my answer should be negative. And we are supposed to add those numbers together. Here's where we need our fraction rules. When we are adding the fractions, we need to find a common denominator and then rewrite the fractions if necessary. So going back, one number is 13, the other number is 26. To find the denominators, generally we list the multiples of the numbers. So I'm listing the multiples of 13. So 13 times 1 is 13. 13 times 2 is 26. 13 times 3 is 39. 13 times 4 is 52. And I hope that's enough. And 2 times 1 is 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 8 times 5 is 10 times 6 is 12 times 7 is 14 times uh, you get you get the point <laughs> I've lost track 20 22 24 26 so what are we looking for we are looking for the first number that we see in both lists. And the first number that I see in both lists is the 26. So that's going to be my common denominator. So now I have to ask myself, okay, what am I doing to that 13 or what can I do to it to make it 26? I have to multiply by 2. But remember, when we are renaming a fraction, what we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. Okay, now I'm going over to 2 and 1 half and thinking, well, I need to make that 2 a 26. So in order to make it a 26, I'm going to have to multiply by 13. But what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. Now, let's refocus. We are supposed to be adding these numbers together. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 and 5 times 2 is 10, 13 times 2 is 26, and I'm adding plus 2 and 1 times 13 is 13, 
2 times 13 is 26. Now that I have a denominator and I'm adding, now I need to add the fractions. Remember, we're going to add the numerators. The denominator stays the same. So I'm going to add the numerators, the top numbers. 10 plus 13 is 23. And the denominator stays the same. Both my denominators are 26. So my denominator remains a 26. Now I need to add the whole numbers if necessary. And it is necessary here. I need to add the 5 and the 2. And that is 7. And the last thing I need to do is simplify if necessary. There's really no simplification that I need to do right here. However, this answer is not correct because remember, our answer is negative. So our final answer should be 7, negative 7 and 23, 26. Okay, let's go on to another problem. The next problem, remember we have to use our integer rules first. Basically, what are we doing with those positives and negatives? Well, we see that our problem is a division problem, so we are multiplying or dividing. And then we have to figure out are we dividing a positive and a positive, a negative and a negative, and a negative and positive? Well, if we look, that first number is positive. That second number is negative. So we are dividing a negative and a positive. Therefore, our answer is going to be negative. So just to help me remember, I'm going to put a little answer bubble and I'm going to put that negative in there. So hopefully I don't forget my negative sign. Now that I have taken care of the negative positive situation, now I need to take care of those fractions. So remember, we are dividing those fractions. When we're dividing fractions, the first thing we need to do is to convert any mix or whole number to improper fractions. So to convert to improper fractions, I'm going to go clockwise starting with this 12 and going in this direction. So I'm going to take the 12 and I'm going to multiply it by two, which gives me 24. And then I'm going to add 11, which gives me 35. So renaming that as an improper fraction is 35 twelfths. And I'm going to divide that by, and I need to do the same thing for the other fraction. I'm going to start right here at the denominator and I'm going to move in a clockwise direction. I'm going to multiply 5 times 4, which gives me 20. And then I have to add 1 to it, which gives me 21. So that's going to be 21 fifths. Okay, next, we need to rewrite the problem to multiply by the reciprocal. Keep, change, flip. Again, the proper way to say that is multiply by the reciprocal. But we're going to keep the 35 over 12. We're going to change division to its opposite, which is multiplication. And then we're going to take the reciprocal of this fraction by just flipping that fraction. So again, I'm keeping 35 
over 12 as it is. I'm changing division to multiplication. And when I flip that fraction, I have 5 21st. Okay. So now we want to try to simplify before we multiply. That's not always possible, but in this particular instance, it is possible. So we're going to look and think, what can we simplify? We can divide on top and bottom by 7. Remember, when you simplify what you do in the numerator, you have to do to the denominator. I'm going to rewrite that. 35 divided by 7 is 5 over 12 times 5 over 21 divided by 7 is 3. So now that we've simplified before we multiply, we're just going to multiply the numerator straight across and multiply the denominators straight across. So 5 times 5 is 25 and 12 times 3 is 36. And the last step is to simplify if necessary. And there's really nothing there that can be simplified. But be careful. Remember that a negative divided by, or actually a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So our answer is negative 25 36. Okay, one more example, and then you're on your own. There it is. Okay, so here's our last example. Negative three and a half plus five and four fifths. Remember, first we have to figure out what are we doing with the positive and negative signs? So we are adding. So I need to check add. And now I need to decide, do I have the same sign or do I have different signs? Well, I'm adding a negative and a positive number. So they have different signs. So my rule is to subtract and use the sign of the number with the greater absolute value. Before I forget my sign, I'm going to go back and think, okay, well, this is negative three and a half. That's positive five and a half. Five is greater than three. This five is positive. So my answer is going to be positive. So I'm going to make me a little answer bubble and just put a plus sign in there. Just to help me remember, my answer should be positive. Now, let's focus on what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be subtracting. And so I don't forget, I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. I have five and four fifths, and I'm supposed to be subtracting minus three and a half. Notice I put the 5 on the top because it is the greater number, and I put the five, the 3 on the bottom because it is smaller. Now, let's talk about subtracting fractions. Well, to subtract fractions, first I need to find a common denominator. And again, to find a common denominator, you can list the multiples if you want. So the multiples of 5 are 5, 10, 
15, 20, 25, 30. The multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And we can keep going. Okay, so remember, we are looking for the first number that we see in both lists. And the first number that I see in both lists is that 10. So I need my new denominator to be 10. Therefore, I'm going to multiply this 5 by 2. And what I do to the bottom of that fraction, I must do to the top. And for that 1 half, to make that denominator a 10, I'm going to have to multiply by 5. But what I do to the bottom of that fraction, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to rewrite this, reflecting my new denominator. So that's going to be 5 and 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 2 is 10. And I'm subtracting 3 and 1 times 5 is 5. And 2 times 5 is 10. Okay. So going back, we found the common denominator. We rewrote the fractions. Now we have to subtract the fractions first. We have to subtract the numerators. The denominator stays the same. So let's go back and look at our numerators. So 8 minus 5 is 3, and the denominator stays the same. And 5 minus 3 is 2. Now, let's just go ahead and remember that our answer is positive. So our answer is positive 2 and 3 tenths. You don't have to write that plus there. It's understood that it's positive. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.